In this video, I'm gonna show you how to import and configure the Cisco Cloud Services Router 1000V or Cisco CSR 1000V. So what I'll do now is power on the two routers and open up a console. We're told to press any key to continue but even without doing that, the routers boot up. So we can see both router one and router two are booting. When these devices boot up, they use quite a bit of CPU and may consume a lot of RAM. At the moment, you can see that 55% of my CPU and about 4% of my RAM in the Junus 3 VM are being used. My Junus 3 VM in this example is configured with four processor cores, and eight gig of RAM. Now it may take a while for your routers to boot up depending on the amount of RAM and CPU that they have access to. Again, these devices take more processing power and CPU than devices such as an iOS V router. In Junus 3, going to Preferences, QMU, iOS V, you can see the amount of RAM required is three gig, whereas a Cisco iOS V router requires 512 meg of RAM. So there's quite a difference in the memory requirements of these devices. Now these devices take a while to boot up, and so that you don't have to wait for that, I'm gonna speed up the video at this point, but do expect that your routers will take a while to boot up when you run this on your computer. That's why, as an example, you may prefer to run these devices on an ESXi host, where you can throw a lot of RAM and CPU at the devices. We told, as an example, that this is Cisco iOS XE software. After a while, the routers boot up. So, router on the left has booted up and I'll just wait for the router on the right to boot up. So there you go, both routers are booted up. So right on the left, enable conf t, hostname r1, interface gigabit one, IP address 10.1.1.1, subnet mask slash 24, no shut, show IP interface brief. You can see that I've configured an IP address on the first interface, Gigabit 1, as per our diagram. And I'll do something similar with the router on the right, hostname router 2, interface Gigabit 1, IP address 10.1.1.2, slash 24, no shut, show IP, interface, brief. Ping 10.1.1.1. So router two is now able to ping router one, and router one should be able to ping router two. Let's enable a routing protocol on this router. So I'll enable OSPF and give the router a loopback of quadruple one. So show IP interface brief. We have a loopback and an IP address configured on the gigabit interface, show IP OSPF interface brief, shows us that OSPF is enabled on the loopback and the gigabit interface. You should configure your loopbacks first, so let me do that here. And then I'll enable OSPF on all interfaces. So show IP OSPF interface, we can see that OSPF is running on the loopback as well as gigabit one. Router ID is 2.2.2.2. .2 Here's the brief information. OSPF may take a while to form a neighbor relationship, but we can see that the router on the left is the designated router. Router on the right is still waiting. Show IP route. We don't have any routes in the routing table yet because the neighbor relationship has to be formed. We can see that that's just happened on both of the routers. So show IP OSPF neighbor. We can see that router one has a neighbor relationship to router two, 
and router two is the backup designated router, show IP, OSPF neighbor. Router one is the designated router. I enabled OSPF before creating the loopback, so hence the neighbor ID is shown as follows. Show IP route shows us that router two has learnt about the loopback through OSPF, and I can ping the loopback of router one and router one can ping the loopback of router two. So that's how you import and configure Cisco CSR routers in GNS3. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.